So, how was your breakfast this morning? It was good. Nice Sunday breakfast. Great. So, was it in the DSC campus somewhere or where was it? No, no. Uh, like, uh, <clears throat> right now we have not been allotted hostels. So, yeah, I'm staying on my own in my uh, near in Delhi only at my relative's place. Okay, okay. So, um, you this would be hostels to be allotted and then I'll shift to the hostel. Okay, got it, got it. So, have the classes started at DSC? Yeah, the classes have started. So, how's the bad size? Is it still two fifty plus students that that you know kind of sit in the auditorium, or how is it? So yeah, we have uh, like around uh, two fifty plus students in the batch. But uh, the good thing they have done for uh, this semester, uh, like for starting from our batches, that they have divided the batch into two groups, and we have classes on uh, different times. So one one is group A and the other is group B, and uh, so what happens is the class size is uh, around one twenty to one thirty people, which is uh, much better than a two fifty people class. That's a blessing. So you know. because i used to travel i used to travel from a far place so i used to travel from noida to bsc and it it used to be some one one and a half hour journey i was always 10 minutes late for the class and the auditorium would okay. always get full and i used to sit on the floor every day and it was so cold okay. in the winters sitting on the floor and there was no option you could not get chair from anywhere and the mm. auditorium was filled full to the end so either you had the option okay. of sitting in the last row which meant that you could not listen that clearly to the professor or sitting on the floor and listening to the professor with a coffee in hand so it was pretty bad in in terms of the number of people who attended bsc okay. so, you know division of batch size is literally a blessing for you guys i think so they should have done have this to, years ago we don't have to deal with all these these things and we also have an advantage that uh, if you are a morning person you can attend the classes in the morning if you are not a morning person you can attend the classes in the like late afternoon types batch oh, super so one class <laughs> so in I the morning and one... dsc has this thing ha huh? so i i don't know if they still have it but during our times monday used to be um exam day i mean after oh, okay. some time you will see that every monday one subjects exam is going to be there in the mid sem in the mid semesters okay so you know once you give the exam because you have been studying entirely for the entire saturday sunday and throughout the week once you give the exam you are so drained out that you don't really have that capacity of attending the class immediately after this and that class used to be super important and we didn't you know we could not even miss it and it was so difficult doing the two things together so i think so you have that thing of you can take a break after that exam and then maybe you can attend those classes again Good. We'll have to so, see how that turns out. We are yet to give any. <laughs> right. Exam. And have the professors been allotted? Do you have? Do you still have a Professor Ram Singh and Abhijit Banerjee around? Uh, no, they are not teaching us. And uh, uh, I think Professor Ram Singh is still at DSC. But Abhijit Banerjee, somebody told me like a. Uh, I'm not sure about this information, but somebody told me that he has uh, left DSC and he's currently at IIT Delhi. Oh, because uh, he was an excellent. Yeah, Excellent mm-hmm. mathematics faculty. Like some of the faculties were superb. Like there, there was there is no one above them. So I think so they have been excellent teachers. So I still remember Ram Singh for micro and and we had Abhijit Banerjee for maths and then we had uh, I don't remember the name but he was excellent at game theory. So you know that led me kind of think that I can also do PhD in these subjects. They were that good at these subjects. Okay. But then once placement happens, you just forget everything. In in the, once you start earning, you're like, okay, this is this is fine. <laughs> this is the right life that we are living. <laughs> okay. So so I just kind of wanted to you know understand what what is your uh, what was your strategy? Did you follow making any notes throughout the journey, or uh, you know? i mean did you make subject wise registers that students usually ask me or was it a very general uh, just solving the past years and you know sitting for the exam okay. what kind of strategy okay. did you follow okay. so uh, let me give some background about myself i come from an engineering background so i have done btech initially and uh, so that gave me a little advantage in mathematics and uh, and 
statistics probably they, we had done some of it during jai preparation and then uh, some of it was a part of our curriculum and then uh, what i had to do was to study micro and macro and uh, a little bit of econometrics which was not covered in my engineering statistics things so uh, is my voice voice audible clearly yes yes it is hello yes it is clear hello yeah so and uh, the thing was the uh, micro and macro i had to do but uh, the thing is i had not like been taught it formally anywhere before this so i had to follow a strategy i uh, uh, took some guidance from some people who had studied economics about what are the right resources to follow for entrance examinations and they uh, somebody told me about a youtube lecture series somebody told me which books i should follow and then uh, i collated all the resources and uh, then i started doing it like like i followed them very religiously like i would pick up one of the things and i would do it from beginning to the end and i would make proper notes of it so that if i don't get time to uh, go through the book or say lecture series again i still have notes to revise because i knew that uh, i know ki i don't i don't uh, remember things in one go but uh, i'll need some revisions for it, to remember the stuff so i did make proper notes but uh, the thing was i did not make notes of everything i made notes of only the first resource which i followed like for microeconomics i followed <clears throat> a youtube lecture series and after that i started reading halvarian so youtube lecture series was uh, in its own very good uh, very comprehensive thing i made notes of it and after that i started reading halvarian and from halvarian i would only write those things in my notes which were not present which i had not done initially so that i don't overburden myself in the later time and for macro uh, also i followed a book i started reading uh, mankiv but i thought that mankiv i found that mankiv was not good enough for entrance examination so i left it midway and uh, shifted to donbush and for donbush also i made uh, complete notes like everything which i found in book which i felt key is important and i can't remember it straight away i would write it down in my registers and once i was done with this uh, making notes and uh, first uh, like first revision uh, going through the syllabus after that i started solving questions <coughs> hello yeah so after that i started solving uh, past year papers first i went through uh, isi papers and then dsc papers and then also other papers and meanwhile i also wrote the jam and gate examination so uh, that also helped me in assessing where my preparation is because uh, uh, like they gave me a fair enough idea of what all things i have done and what all things need to be done uh, in the come remaining time before isi exam or the dsc exam or even igidr exam <clears throat> okay so since you had also taken admission at igidr before this did you experience something there was it that the classes had already started or you know they were yet to start in igidr also oh so igi idea the experience was great uh, we uh, like uh, by <laughs> this time as uh, one semester uh, hello yes you audible hello yes yes you audible yeah uh, so uh, by the time dsc results were out igi idea first semester was already over and by now they have all they are also done with the final examinations for the first semester of igi idea so pretty much i lived one semester in igi idea and uh, it was great okay so you know uh, this is i think so very important that till you don't get time so i know one of my uh, student she actually got her name deducted from igi idea much before the list came for dsc thinking that she will get through dsc and i think so that's okay. a mistake unless you don't secure a position in the second in any other mm -hmm. institute you should continue with the first institute i mean yes igi yes. dr in itself is a superb institute so um, yes. you should only once you get your name you should get your name deducted from the other list otherwise you are at no place mm -hmm. in the end and that that's not nice for mm -hmm. students who are super intelligent okay 
so <clears throat> you know many students um, ask me how to attempt questions in the exam should they be you know because they just panic if they don't see the first five questions and they see that you know i'm not getting anything out of it they will panic okay. for the rest of the exam so was there some strategy that you followed uh, during that was it the case that you looked at all the micro questions first in the exam and started doing that or you just followed the sequence and you just did it in this okay way? okay so uh, i did not look at all the questions and first <laughs> started attempting it but uh, uh, my strategy i had a very clear strategy in mind i had done all the dse question papers from 2006 to 2021 and i have attempted that uh, like not once but at least twice for almost all the papers so i had a fair enough idea of what kind of questions they would be asking and uh, i knew what kind of questions i can solve and how much time it would take me to solve uh, what kind of questions like i knew that this is the kind of questions which i'll solve in one go this is the kind of question which i'll which i, I won't be able to solve and like how i had a fair enough idea of what my strengths are what are what my weaknesses are so when i was going through the paper for the first time like in, in the examination hall uh i would see a question and i would know ki this is a question which i can solve this is a question which i might need a lot more time to solve so i knew in first attempt ki which all questions need to be solved in first attempt and which all question need to be left for the later and which all questions i should straight away ignore and only come back to them after everything else is done and then see if i should do this or not so i had this idea and uh, this was very well like ingrained in my mind so this was my strategy got it okay so uh, you know the same thing uh, even happened with us one thing that that people used to tell us is that you have to sit through those 3 hours i remember when so you know our exam centers used to be all these faculty of law departments in du and okay. different departments so you know what my professor had suggested me is that you have to sit through the 3 hours you will yes. notice that many students will just leave the hall within 1 hour and that is exactly what happened mm-hmm. out of 50 okay. students who were sitting in the hall about 30 to 35 left in the first one one and a half hours mm-hmm. so you know that you know <clears throat> you have eliminated people just because they panicked they didn't even give mm-hmm. that a try so giving yeah. try becomes very important and then you know uh, like for example i had this thing that i would always carry a glucon d bottle with me and i used to sip mm-hmm. it throughout the exam that just give yeah. gave me some kind of uh, relief while i attempted the paper so do you do you also believe in something that you know if i do this i will definitely clear the exam or any any other thing that kind of gives you a calmness throughout the exam okay so i do drink a lot of water okay <laughs> and i drink so much of water that uh, like uh, while i was in je exam i had to tell my mother that give me a smaller bottle otherwise uh, i have to use <laughs> go, go to the washroom a lot <laughs> so, so i and i still do that i drink a lot of water which and <clears throat> yeah if i am not able to solve a question i just feel that okay nobody will be able to solve it let's move on to the next <laughs> good <laughs> and think- sometimes i even i said that okay okay if i am not able to solve it then probably it, it's a wrong question it will get bonus <laughs> later <laughs> so, i think that's the best thing to do because that kind of i mean your confidence should always be boosted up then yeah. then we can later see the result <laughs> examination hall is not the place where you lose the company, uh, your confidence you can lose it sometimes while your preparation is on but in the examination hall Absolutely. and i've always been i'm i mean how have you been as a person i've always been this person who comes out of the hall and discusses literally all the questions with with my uh, you know friends and i said is ka answer what would this be what would this be what would this be and i think so many people would get frustrated by this that why are you doing this right now and i would be like i want to know if majority of us have marked this or not <laughs> so do you do you prefer discussing discuss- it or leaving it till the end that now let just the result come I don't discuss all the questions, but I do discuss the questions which I am doubtful about, and uh, uh, like I just try to get an idea of from the people who I think are intelligent. I'll just get an idea from them if they have attempted it and what they have done in the question. 
yeah but i don't discuss all the questions or something like that i just discuss a few of them <clears throat> okay so so you know i would would want to understand do you also like did you skip any topic did you think that you know doing all the topics were important or did you do a selective study for the exam okay so uh, okay. for ac we got a lot of time because it happened in october so by that time i don't think i skipped any topics but uh, for like the previous examinations like i like micro i did first and macro i did second so for the gate and jam examination i had no idea of what macro is and then by the time my isi paper came up uh, i had some idea of macro and a lot of idea of macro i just got only after that and uh, for the igidr examination like there were a lot of theoretical i in uh, Uh, I think in any of the examinations, sometimes they ask some questions around definitions of terms, like in one of the DAC previous year question about what signage. So I don't come from economics background. I have not done like a full BA course on economics. I don't have idea of that because I just followed some of the books and they did not define the term. And moreover, uh, remembering definitions of all these terms, it's a very cumbersome task. so i thought okay if a question comes on this i'll skip it but uh, i knew that uh, there won't be like all the questions on this stuff <laughs> this stuff like define this define this define this i knew that all the questions won't be around this only so yeah I, things like that so so one last thing i would like to you know i just kind of would like to ask so why why did you come from engineering towards economics i mean what made you switch this uh, towards okay. economics i mean if someone tells me to do btech after i do economics i would be i would be gone i i cannot switch things now <laughs> so what made you so, think that it would be fascinating <laughs> so uh, like btech is not a thing you do after doing any other thing btech is the thing you do after before doing any other thing and after btech you go to do any other thing you want uh, so yeah uh, economics was a subject which always interested me like in 9th uh, and 10th classes where they actually teach economics at that time also i was interested in it but uh, when you have to choose your streams there are just limited career options which you are able to see because of like uh, society does not let you know about <laughs> all the options you have okay so at that time like okay non medical take it and <laughs> once you take non medical the best thing to do is to prepare for iit right and i did that for two years i was like cut off from economics and then once you get into uh, like in engineering college so i was in iit delhi you have a lot of stuff to do you have free time your academics are something like you can always manage with uh, studying for this few days before the exams and uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of co curricular activities available at that time i tried to like uh, i would read a lot of articles of, around economics from the newspapers uh, and uh, and then i like also took some elective courses we have a lot of elective courses and then i when i got more interested i also took, uh, took a research project in economics and then i decided okay this is getting really interesting i should like get a formal degree into economics only <clears throat> so so i decided ki i should pursue a ma economics course and i think so that's the right decision so you know yeah. two years down the line you would be super happy with the decision that you made yes. one of our professor would tell us this is the best uh, return uh, generated uh, course mm-hmm. so you have to pay so less a fee and the corresponding salaries that you're going to fetch from mm-hmm. here are going to be excellent i still remember mm-hmm. one of my friend he was from engineering background he backed okay. the highest package at walmart and i wish you the same that you actually get the highest package once you're okay. graduating from b school Thank, thank you. you so much for your time raga it was great meeting you and having a session with you thank you thank you